My name is Aaron. Uh, I'm a computer science senior undergrad uh, at CU Boulder. My professor is uh, Clayton Lewis. I've been working with him for the past couple years, you know, doing uh, research on uh, brain computer interfaces actually. Um, last year was just an initial research on neuroscience and the current state of brain computer interface technology. And uh, this year I actually uh, wrote a proposal and got funding to uh, get my hands on some of this technology. So this is the Epic headset. Uh, it's the first, uh, among the first of its kind uh, in the consumer industry uh, for brain computer interface technology. The main part of the project is to test the headset's capabilities with a robot in the real world. So I'm here with Michael in the Corel lab and the Prairie Dog robots to test this out. Uh, this is the Prairie Dog robot, and it's a little robot that we're designing here at Coral Lab for research and development. So it's got a lot of um, capabilities for a really inexpensive robot, which is neat. It's built on top of the iRobot Create platform, which is kind of their vacuum platform without the vacuum in it. And then we run all of the brains here on this little netbook computer, which is very inexpensive as well. We also have this robot to do other things besides just run autonomously. And that's one of the neat things that we're looking at today. With this specific brain computer interface headset, there are 30 pre programmed cognitive, expressive, and effective brainwave signatures. These signatures are built into the learning algorithms used to detect and categorize raw EEG signal output. The headset acquires these brainwave signals through 16 damp felt covered electrodes and two rubber reference points. The signals are sent directly from the wireless headset to a USB receiver. This EEG output is then translated to what might look similar to that of an analog signal from an oscilloscope for each individual electrode. The signal processing algorithms must continuously monitor the output to detect any brainwave patterns. Before any control over the robot can be interpreted, the user needs to train their brain signals against the learning algorithms to control digital objects. Once a set of commands is trained, the user can save their custom settings. These custom controls are bound to keyboard input commands that are sent via wireless using remote desktop connection to a netbook connected to the robot. The netbook runs a sophisticated robot operating system which converts the received keyboard commands and translates them to control real robot movements. The more commands you train, the more degrees of freedom there are. The hardest part, yeah, is actually figuring out how to turn it. Um, you can go forward, backward pretty easily um, because those commands, of course, are uh, programmed cognitively. So if I think push, it's going to push forward. You know, if I think pull, it's going to pull back and go in reverse. Um, but winking, that's what's bound to the steering right now. If I wink left, it should turn left. If I wink right, it should turn right. Um, but uh, according to the visual mapper, um, I'm either blinking or raising my eyebrow or smiling whenever I try to wink. When thinking about the future applications for real-world object control using brain-computer interfaces, it is clear that artificial intelligence must play a major role to make anything possible. To start, a few applications could be controlling a wheelchair or a prosthetic limb. More advanced applications might include live musical composition or controlling a remote aircraft.